If it's one card at a time, you can almost play around it. That's the last thought process in my video on So I use the deck of many things in my campaign. Yeah. If it's only one card, you can play around it. Even if that card is the dungeon card. You see, in my latest game of Sound of the Symbol, my party, having just succeeded in a boss fight against one of the chief leaders of the Royals of Faces, realized they had now accrued five cards from the deck of many things. And being unwilling to perhaps allowing those cards to fall in the hands of another bad group or having them taken back, the party decided, let's draw one card or so. And they sat down and agreed on it. The wizard saying, I'll draw only one card from the deck of many things. And the rogue said, I'll draw a card from the deck of many things. As they were discussing, so they uncork the box, they have the five cards in, and they draw. Wizard draws her only one card. Easy enough, it's the gems card. 25,000 gold pieces worth of things fall to the floor, another 25 in gems, and it's beautiful. It's Rogue's turn, he draws a card, it's the Comet card. Now, I rolled it a bit differently, since I use a milestone leveling system that he just got a free feat instead of a level up, especially since they probably weren't going to get in a fight based on where they were in the session. And I don't want the card to go to waste, so he drew it, he got his feet, it was great. And then he said, I draw another card. Wizard's reaction was, what do you mean another card? You agreed to only one. And he replied, no. I said, I would draw a card. I did. I'm going to draw another card. And boy, did he. It was a dungeon card. You see, in perhaps recklessness or malice or just curiosity, because boy, do I love the rogue's player. He's the one who killed his fighter off a couple sessions ago. He drew a card and it was a dungeon card. But... Like I said, you can play around it. The head of the Royals of Faces, the Bernaloth, the dealer, is the one who reached through the dungeon card and took the rogue's physical form and drew it down into the Citadel Tarif, where the party could go and recover it. Now, what about the rogue? What He lost his fighter a couple sessions ago. He's a rogue this session. What's left? Did he make a new, new character? No. You see, before his fighter, there was a cleric, and before that cleric, there was a ranger. And the ranger left the party after just some time, and with that, we just said, ah, yeah, you can bring your ranger back. And he brought his ranger back. So now they're heading to the Citadel Tarif to finish the dealer, or perhaps try to, and to recover the soul of the rogue. And let's just hope things go their way. Because, boy, I was not expecting the dungeon card, but that's the thing with the deck of many things. Sometimes things happen you don't expect. If you include it in your game, just be ready to delegate and plan around or change plans on the fly. I needed 20 minutes for that. Um, and don't be afraid to take 20. Like, if something crazy happens in your game, don't be afraid to go, Okay, guys, I need a minute. Let's just call it a break, get a drink, get some snacks, do whatever. I need some time to think. Your party might appreciate it, especially if the session's a bit long as is, and it just gives everyone a time to think and plan without being at the table and just going, oh, we're going to do da 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 That extra few moments can actually help strengthen the game at a weird time, like drawing a card from the deck of many things. As always, thanks for watching.